We're facing a possible coronavirus pandemic. This administration had three different stories about the events that brought us to the brink of war. So it's no surprise that Americans are scared because this administration keeps proving it can't be trusted to tell us the truth. Okay, what I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Um, do you think that the Iranians' revenge strike on bases in Iraq that injured more than 100 service members is the last that we have seen of Iranian retaliation for the Soleimani killing? That's a yes or no. So you believe it is the last we've seen? I didn't, of I, I didn't say that. No, I, I think the strike on Qasem Soleimani was necessary, but not sufficient. Not my question. My and question, I, I think, I think I'm going to reclaim my time. My question is, do you think that the strike by the Iranians on bases in Iraq after the Soleimani killing was the last that we have seen of retaliatory action by Iran. That's oh no, we, we've seen uh, we've seen the Iranians take uh, actions after that already. Whether you okay. characterize them as retaliatory or not, the, this is a 40-year the theocratic revolutionary regime. And I, I'm with you on that. I'm very, very concerned about the likelihood of tragic and severe retaliation going forward. And I'm terribly concerned that, the, that Iran is going to be looking for even more vulnerabilities and opportunities to harm Americans um, as ret retribution that will play out over the years. Are you worried about that too? But I'm worried that we have increased the chances of harm to these people who serve us. I think it's just led us down a more dangerous and unpredictable path of Iran seeking revenge. And, and I fear for the brave public servants who are going to brave, who are going to bear the brunt of that. The day of the strike, your department issued a warning against all uh, U.S. citizens to depart Iraq immediately. Was there a concern before or after the strike that Americans could be targeted for retaliation? We've, we've known that uh, Americans traveling uh, not only in Iraq. Uh, sir, and, yes or no would be uh, yes, sufficient. Yes, but the answer, the answer is a little I, I know, but we don't really have that much time. So I, 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 did I you I, warn... I need to did, be accurate. Sir, yeah, did, I, you, I apologize did you for warn the embassy either before or after the attack? Uh, the embassy was completely in the loop as we were working through not only hours of okay. days, but the, months. The, the, people, the, the, people the, the people at the embassy who are the ones in harm's way said that they were not warned. Um, I hope you're not saying that they're lying. Sir, were you aware, were you not aware that Americans might be targeted by this um, assassination and, and be retaliated against? Oh, the, the threat from the Islamic Republic is now 40 years on. All right. Well, I ask this because Brian Hook, your, your special representative on Iran, received extra security. At a speech in Los Angeles after the attack, not in Baghdad, Los Angeles, Mr. Hook got protection from diplomatic security, the LAPD, and counter-assault team. Look, I think making sure our public servants have proper security is incredibly important. But I have to ask, if we were so much safer after the strike, why did a U.S. diplomat need counter-assault team to protect him at a speech in California? Yes, uh, there, it's undoubtedly the case that we are all safer. There are, there are distributional elements to this. Uh, that is, there are certain persons who made certain decisions that might be more at risk. But let me assure you, cumulatively, the Americans I, I will are, say, far, sir, are far more safer. If you are claiming that Americans are safer after this attack, apparently time, your department disagrees, at least as far as Mr. Hook woman has and our fired. embassy in Baghdad are concerned. I yield back. Following the attacks and ensuing reports of injured service members, the president had this to say, and I quote, I heard they had headaches and a couple of other things, and I can report it's not very serious. Just briefly, Mr. Pompeo, with a yes or no, do you believe that traumatic brain injury is serious? Yes. I do too. Sir, the administration claimed that the strike on Soleimani was, quote, to deter Iran from conducting or supporting further attacks against the United States forces and interests, end quote. This wasn't deterrence. It was a decision lacking strategy and an endangerment of our national security and of our men and women in uniform. Mr. Pompeo, the president's decision had clearly very real consequences. 110 service members mm -hmm. suffered TBI, what the president has called headaches. And what we know isn't even close to ending is the campaign against us and the allies on behalf of Iran. 
and they are currently enrich enriching uranium again. By your own adam adam adamnition, you have told us that we are not in, safe, uh, in safety and, in, and we are clearly still in harm's way. And so I guess my concern to you, sir, is that I'm not sure what we have accomplished other than injuring 110 service members and other than making our nation a, a less safe place. I'd like to ask you, Mr. Pompeo, uh, about something that was said after the Soleimani strike. On January 6th, the president told the American people in a tweet, in all caps, I think we have it here, Iran will never have a nuclear weapon. It will never have a nuclear weapon. I agree, Iran should not have a nuclear weapon. But in that now famous radio interview with Mary Louise Kelly, I think you know her, uh, she asked you not once, not twice, but three times what the administration was going to do to stop Iran from having a nuclear weapon. Here's what you said. But my question again, how do you stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon? We'll, we'll stop them. How? We'll Sanctions? Stop we'll stop them. Well, since you made that comment, Iran has tripled the amount of stockpiled uranium it has. So I'm going to give you another chance to a answer the question. Uh, how are we going to stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon? We'll stop them. That, <laughs> well, you know, that's and really not a plan. I'll take my time. time back since you're, gonna, I, I, you're making be, fun I, of my question. I, I'll just take my to, time I'd back. Be happy to give her uh, we'll stop them as like a bumper sticker. That, be, that's not a plan. I'd be happy to give so her a response. So I'll go back response. to the interview you, with you, Mr. Kelly. You decided Kelly. to have some fun. I thought I, I'd have a moment Excuse me, Mr. Pompeo, I've got my time back. And you said, in effect, well, he's blustering. Mm -hmm. Frankly, Mr. Pompeo, I agree blustering is dangerous, especially when it comes to nuclear weapons development, but today you're just blustering. This is not a plan. This is not an acceptable substitute for a plan, and we're just not going to allow that. And I yield back. My colleagues have shown killing Soleimani made America less safe in ways that were entirely predictable, and yet it doesn't seem like the administration was at all prepared for a vote to expel American forces from Iraq or for guided missile strikes that forced our service members to hide in bunkers, or for a complete halt to the fight against ISIS. Just like the pullout from Syria, the President made a decision with no planning and no understanding of the consequences. This is exactly why the framers of our Constitution decided not to entrust any single person with the power to take America to war. Instead of following the law and seeking authorization, you first said there was an imminent threat, which we know isn't true. You then concocted a theory that Congress had somehow already authorized you to attack Iran. Mr. Secretary, do you really believe Congress authorized the President to attack Iran? I'm very confident that every action that this administration has taken is fully lawful. Every member of this body knows that Congress never authorized war with Iran, and we certainly didn't do it 18 years ago on an authorization for an entirely different war. We're terrified. We are terrified as a nation about the coronavirus, particularly when we read in the papers that one of the top officials, the vice president of women and family affairs in Iran, contracted the disease. And we saw yesterday how Wall Street took an unprecedented dive. Americans are terrified. I'm terrified about the coronavirus. My question, I know you want to answer questions, so my question is a very direct one. A yes or no answer required. Do you feel that we should divert funding to build the wall to stop the spread of this coronavirus that's terrifying American families across our nation? We have a money problem. The president has presented a deep cut to your department. Do you feel we should divert money from building the wall to stop this pandemic? Yes or no? It's a straw man argument. Yes or no? It's a straw man argument. Yes or no? Give me an answer. You want to answer questions. Yes or no? We can we can do You're all not, of I reclaim things. my time. Yes or no? Do you feel we should divert funding from building the wall to stop this pandemic that's terrifying American families, yes or no? America has the resources. You're not answering my question. Let me ask you another question. Do you feel your employees are in danger, in risk of contracting the coronavirus? We, we've taken a number of actions. Are they in risk of contracting this virus? Yes or no? 
Sir, may I, would, be, would you permit me to answer? Yes, question? give me a yes or no answer. It's, it's more complicated. It's a complicated you, No, it's answer. not. Yes, you know, yes. you're, you're sitting in a, in a consular office interviewing people in China or in Japan or in Asia. Are you at risk of contracting this disease? Every one of our ambassadors evaluates the risks to their officers every day. Our officers all across the world, not just from coronavirus, Mr. Mr. are at risk. Time Why the I'm so proud of what they're has doing. Expired. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I yield back. Mr. Yoho. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, thank you for being here. I'll answer that last question. Yes, everybody's at risk of it. Yes, everyone. Um, risk, Mr. Risk. Secretary.